Hi San Antonio, I'm Michelle Martinez and welcome to this very special edition of Park Bench. We know things are very different right now because of the pandemic, but we've seen many of you outside enjoying parks, trails, and even your own backyards. On this episode of Park Bench, we're gonna tell you what your parks and recreation has been doing to keep up with the pandemic and keep everyone safe. On this episode, we're sharing new additions to the Howard W. Peak Greenway Trail System, learning how trail stewards are keeping our community safe, sharing information about the summer food program, and we're visiting with Homer Garcia, Director of Parks and Recreation. Let's get started. We're here on the Salado Creek Greenway, just north of Loop 1604. Whether you're an avid trail user or new to the trails, we hope you're enjoying all the beauty our trail system has to offer. Brandon Ross will be joining us to give us a quick update on our trail system and share how many miles of trails are now completed. So it's been about 20 years now. It was a combined program initially with the Edwards Aquifer Recharge Program, but it began with Howard W. Peak, who was the mayor at the time. He was a champion along with his fellow council members of an idea that had been brewing in San Antonio for a good long time to make the creeks and the floodplains in, in San Antonio into a recreational amenity for people in San Antonio so that people could walk and enjoy the outdoors and visit hike and bike trails and the kind of thing that you see today. So it's been quite an evolution over time. And then ever since, we've been building miles and miles of greenways, and we're basically up now to 80 miles of trails all along Salado Creek, Leon Creek, the West Side Creeks, Medina River, and a lot of the tributaries within San Antonio. We're trying to build on all sides of the city and to reach as many neighborhoods as possible so that people will have walkable access. So it's, it's a great opportunity for San Antonio residents and visitors alike to come out and enjoy the outdoors with your family, your loved ones, your dogs. Um, you know, whatever it may be, just to be able to basically get out and get some of the beautiful views of the geology, of the creek itself, of the wildlife in the floodplains in the beautiful areas in San Antonio. So just over the past year, we've been able to open 10 more miles of trails. We had 70 miles coming into middle 2019, and ever since then, we've been opening up more and more segments of trail including on the Medina River Greenway system. There's actually two trail segments for a total of seven miles that we've opened on the Medina River Greenway trail system. That system is now complete. It's a 17 mile trail system all the way from Medina River Natural Area to Mission Espada. And you've got a lot of opportunities down that way to look at migratory birds along Mitchell Lake and along Casson Lake. Both of those lakes are basically right adjacent to the trail. So you can see the water, you can see the birds interacting in their native habitats. And it's a really beautiful scene down at Medina River. So that's definitely one to go see. And then the Salado Creek Greenway North, that's where we are now, north of Loop 1604, going almost to the border of Camp Bullis. It's another three miles that we've opened just in the last month. And it's a beautiful segment of Greenway. You can see the cliff behind me. There's a lot of deer and wildlife along this system. And we look forward to the day, of course, that we're gonna be able to connect this to Eisenhower Park and then build it down the other side through Leon Creek as well. We're hoping for Leon Creek to be fully completed up through the rim to the Eisenhower Park trailhead that's now under construction in 2021. So that's gonna be an exciting development for everybody to really enjoy when we get to that point. The trails are getting a lot more use since the pandemic began. I think because people are just able to social distance more easily in an outdoor environment like this. And of course, we continue to encourage people to use social distancing like they need to. But we've seen a, a great increase in the interest in people who've never even used the greenways before. You know, we just continue to, to impress upon people to take to the trails, so to speak, in a way that's courteous to other people and that respects other people's space because there's just more people on the trails and we wanna make sure that everybody's safe. So especially when you're coming around those corners, watch and make sure that your dogs, your, your children are close by, that you're staying to the right, passing on the left, and also make sure during the summer to bring a lot of water with you because it does get very hot on the Greenway trails. We wanna make sure everybody's safe while they're out here. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Hey San Antonio, stay fit with our new Homebody series and check out more fitness videos on social media. 
ready to get moving? It's your lucky day. We have a special workout just for you. Feeling lucky? Well, that's perfect because that's the name of today's workout on home bodies. My name is Shannon and I'm gonna be your instructor today. Kids, it's time to jump up off that couch and join in on this 30 minute family fun workout. How this works. All you're gonna need are two dice. One dice dedicated to exercises, one dice dedicated to time. Whatever number you roll on the dice is the exercise that you'll do, same thing for the time. So for me, I'm gonna use this blue dice for the exercises, use this yellow dice for the time. But if you don't have these super cool, big, foamy dice, you can go ahead and use some board game dice that you have at home and color those if you want. You can make your own dice, or if you want to make it super simple, just put two sets of numbers one through six in a bag and randomly draw a number. So whatever works for you. Let me show you an example. So my blue dice is uh, the exercise dice. Bam. And yellow is time. Snap. Okay. And we got a six. So I'm gonna do hopscotches for one minute and 15 seconds. I hope everybody's ready, cause I'm ready. Let's let the games begin. Start off by planting two feet on the ground and hopping one foot back and then back down. Repeat on the opposite leg. It's gonna feel like playing real hopscotch. To modify, forget the jumping and do stationary butt kickers. Lay down in a sit-up position with arms slightly outward and swivel from side to side. Try to touch your fingertips to your heels for the full core burn. Woohoo! Cardio time, everyone! Jump up, come down on your hands and extend your legs all the way back out and then back in. Keep that up until your time runs out. Modification, do a calf raise instead of a jump and walk your legs out and in. All right, kids, time to show off your frog jumping skills. With both feet planted on the ground, leap as far as you can. Remember to land soft so you don't hurt your knees. To take it a notch down, just take a large step and squat. For roll-ups, lay flat on the ground and use those core muscles to roll yourself up. Try and get your fingertips to touch your tippy toes to ensure you're getting a full crunch. Great job, family and friends. I know this workout is called Feeling Lucky, but I'm feeling great and I hope you are too. Remember, this is a family workout. So mom, dad, grandma, everybody jump into this. Or if you want, you can virtually challenge somebody to this workout. I still have time left on the clock, so I'll see you all on the flip side. The City of San Antonio's Parks and Recreation Department is essential to residents during this challenging time. We caught up with Parks and Recreation Director Homer Garcia to tell us more about what's going on with your city parks. So Homer, tell us what Parks and Recreation has been doing to support our residents during the pandemic. We've been doing two primary things. Number one is making sure that we're getting meals to the community. Uh, when the pandemic started, we teamed up with DHS early on to help get food out to seniors. But then when summer came and school was out, we started our summer food program that actually began June 1st. So we've continued that food service delivery at designated sites where uh, we public come, pick up the meal, take it home to enjoy. And then second, we've been making sure our parks are clean, open to the public uh, for use during the pandemic. So we've seen a lot of uptake as far as park usage and trail usage. What kind of numbers or what kind of things are you seeing? We've seen more and more people are coming out to our trails actually. Our Howard W. Peak Greenway Trail System has been very good outlet. And while it's always been a jewel in our portfolio and a popular amenity, we have really seen an uptick, which is a good thing because we know that parks are critical to providing relief to the public uh, during this pandemic, uh, not only mental, but also able to maintain physical activity. I 
I know parks are considered an essential infrastructure. And what does that mean to you as the Parks and Rec director? Well, it's essential in the sense that we are, during the pandemic, the one thing that's been constant is we've been open. I mean, we've had designated times, of course, where we have closed parks and it was really out of the need to limit gatherings and ensure the, the safety of our community, but parks have been open. So as parks director, uh, one thing that the pandemic has shown is more than ever, parks are relevant and needed in the community. For us, we're just trying to keep up with the demand and making sure that when someone comes to a park, it's clean, it's safe and functional for use. What are some reminders um, for residents when they go out to parks as far as safety? What are some things that they should remember? Well, one of the things I think that people need to remember is physical distance is important. Mm -hmm. So a good measure is if so you're walking with the buddy, put your arms <laughs> out and we're six feet apart. Um, so that's a real quick, easy way to make sure you're keeping your physical distance. But in the example of our um, hike and bike trail system, basic trail etiquette type of things, because we've seen more people coming to the trails and using them and some for the very first time learning how to use the trail is critical so mm -hmm. announcing when you're approaching someone that you're going to pass on the left and uh, recently we installed speed limit signs on the trail and that's really to protect the trail user because mm -hmm. you know we've noticed that for our riders and bicyclists sometimes they reach speeds that aren't safe for multiple users at any given time so we have put those speed limit signs out and we have seen some improvement on the trail, so that's a positive thing. So I would say not only maintaining physical distance when you're on our trails, observing good trail etiquette, but if you're in a park and you're not able to keep physical distance, face coverings are so important as well to safely using our parks and being in our parks during this pandemic. So Homer, tell us about some of the amenities um, Parks and Recreation has closed um, due to safety. Some of the amenities we have closed are those amenities where typically we see people congregating. Uh, so for example, playgrounds. At the start of the pandemic, playgrounds were one of the first amenities to close and they remain closed today. Uh, idea behind that is, you know, kids maybe not necessarily don't understand what physical distancing is or because they had to do distance learning from home. The minute they get out to the playground with their children, they want to interact and, and be too close. And that's not safe uh, especially during the pandemic. So playgrounds have been closed, uh, splash pads continue to be closed, skate plazas, um, exercise equipment, those types of things where they're like joint activities and people are gonna be close together that are just not conducive for uh, that physical distancing that's uh, required in, right now. We've really tried hard uh, to put physical distancing reminders uh, at parking lots, trailheads, and high traffic areas to physically display what six feet looks like. We've also had signs in place at playgrounds, skate plazas, but because it's temporary signage, we're constantly having to go back, make sure it's in place. Um, in some instances, we've removed the basketball goals so that, again, we're reinforcing basketball courts and another popular amenity that have been closed and just making sure that as people approach these amenities that they know are closed, they'll see that signage there. So we're continuously making sure it's in place and trying to keep up with that as best we can. So there's a difference between residents who are in the same household versus you know people who don't live together. Can you share a little more, bit more about that and explain the difference? So currently, um, members of the same household may come out and enjoy a barbecue at a picnic pad, but the commingling of households where you, you're not quite sure what the foot traffic has been and where people have gone to mm -hmm. before, that's what's prohibited. So, um, and when we get back to some of the park closures where those celebratory type events, whether it's Easter or Fourth of July, that bring people together, really getting back to commingling of households, mm -hmm. we've really worked hard to try to eliminate that. So if you're gonna be in a park, physical distancing is important. Face coverings mm -hmm. when you're not able to to um, maintain that distance. And then lastly, if you're gonna come out to a park and have a picnic, do with members of your immediate household and family to help us rebound quicker from this pandemic because mm -hmm. we're all eager to get through it together. So one of the other things that I wanted to point out, we've heard in the past the term pack it in, pack it mm -hmm. out. 
And we've used that a lot around uh, Easter weekend when people are going to come to parks as a way to help keep them safe and clean. We encourage people to take out with them what they bring to park as a conservation practice. But in the context of the pandemic, if you think about not leaving any trash in the park that someone else is going to have to come behind and pick up, whether it's a staff person or possibly even um, another pedestrian mm -hmm. being a good park patron picking up that trash that eliminates a, a contact point if you will mm -hmm. and so I think in, in you think about terms of the pandemic pack it in pack it out takes on a whole new meaning but it's a great way to do your part to protect the community that's really important I know things are rapidly changing so where can residents find more information on so, closures and just anything well um, they can come to our website SA Parks and Rec. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're constantly updating it to provide the latest information to the public. If there's any questions, they can call 311 for information as well to either report some things that they see where maybe some of the, the policies that we have in place and are, are not being adhered to, or if there's people congregating in groups larger than 10, or we've got a way to respond to that but I would recommend that they call 311. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Our simple science videos will make learning fun for the entire family. Get ready to beat the heat. On this video, we're teaching you how to make ice cream in a bag. Mmm. Check out more videos on social media. Welcome back to Simple Science with San Antonio's Parks and Recreation. Not only is today's experiment going to be super fun and cool, but it's also going to be very tasty. We're going to be making ice cream in a bag. So today's materials that are going to be needed are things that can easily be found around the house, such as ice, salt, two Ziploc bags, one gallon and one sandwich size, a vanilla extract, measuring cup, sugar, and milk. You can use half and half or regular milk. So the first step is you're going to take your sandwich bag and this is gonna be what you put your ice cream in. So you're gonna add in one cup of milk. And then you're going to need two tablespoons of sugar. and one teaspoon of your vanilla extract. Once you have everything mixed, or in the bag, make sure there's no air in it, and seal it. And then give it a quick little mix. That way the sugar dissolves into the milk. Next, you're going to take your ice, and fill up your ice bag halfway with ice. If you want, you can use a cup, but for right now, I'm just gonna use my hand. Once you have a good amount of ice, you're gonna put in three-fourths a cup of salt. That's a little bit more than three-fourths. So I'm not going to pour in all of that. All right. Now you're going to take your ice cream bag and place it into the ice. I'm going to put a little bit more of ice on top of the ice cream bag. And then you're going to seal it. Again, make sure there's no extra air. And now you're going to take your bag and you're going to give it a good shake from anywhere between five to 15 minutes. Well, now that you've worked up an appetite, after about 10 minutes of shaking, and you feel that the ice cream is starting to get firm, you can go ahead and take it out. You may want to wipe it down with a damp cloth or even run it under the faucet to get the salt 
off of the seal, but then you can open it and grab a spoon and enjoy. Mmm, so good. You can even test out your own recipes using different kinds of extracts, crushed up cookies, or even some fresh fruit. The possibilities are endless, but I hope you had fun today. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. As more people venture outside and take to the trails to enjoy fresh air and sunshine, safety is always a priority. You might have seen cyclists in bright green fluorescent shirts. Those are our trail stewards. And we met up with a couple of them to learn more about what they do and what they're doing to help keep us safe. The trail stewards are part of our team. Their job is to ride the trails and help the citizens. If they see somebody that is dehydrated, they check to see if they're okay. They offer emergency water if needed or direct them to the nearest water fountain. They also provide CPR, people who may need some tools. They educate the public on trail etiquette. I enjoy and love being a trail steward because it keeps me out in nature and I'm helping people out and keeping the beauty of the trails intact. I love being a trail steward because where else can you get paid to exercise on these beautiful trails? It's awesome to be outside enjoying nature. With COVID-19, some of the important tips that we encourage patrons to practice is keeping a six foot distance from one another. Make sure you bring water and stick to the right hand side of the trail. And if you're going to pass someone, whether you're a biker, a runner, or a skateboarder, you announce on your left. That way people will know that you're passing them on the left. When caring for your dog, please use the provided gloves at the various trailhead stations to pick up your dog's waste and then properly dispose of it. We have trash cans at all the trailheads and along the way. Another guideline is to be careful when you're negotiating blind turns. You never know what's around the corner, just like when you're driving. It's important not to mess with the barricades that are out on the trails because we have continued construction. Restraining your dog properly with a leash is very important because other people can trip over the leashes, it can cause accidents on the trail, and we're trying to keep everybody safe. Uh, you should also be aware that with the change in weather, uh, dogs, just like people, need water, and you need to be prepared on how you're going to provide water to your dog on the trail. One of my favorite trails is, uh, they're all my favorite trails, but one of my favorite trails is Medina because there's hardly any traffic out there, there's no houses out there, and you're just communing with nature. Another trail that's really nice, that doesn't have very much traffic, is South Salado. And the nice thing about South Salado is that it has a lot of shade. The trail stewards normally carry the maps that they hand out to park patrons. On the back of the map, there is a QR code that the citizens can scan to download to their phones and always have them. We also want to maintain the trail, so that's part of the things that we do is we uh, help with the maintenance of the trail. We report them to the city. In essence, we're the eyes and ears of the city. Our trail stewards do a lot to keep us safe out on the trails. Now that you know what they do, next time you see one, say hello. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. Our quick craft videos are easy and simple. All you need is a couple of household items and your imagination. Get ready to get crafty. We're making a bird feeder today. Wow, look at that bird. I wonder if it's hungry or maybe it needs somewhere to live. I'm going to build it a house. That's a good idea, right? Welcome to Crick Crafts. Let's go inside and get this project started. Today's Quick Craft is for the birds. We're going to make bird feeders and bird houses, but we're going to start with this one first. The materials for your bird feeder should be things you can hopefully find around your house. You will need a water bottle, bird seed, 
some popsicle sticks, hot glue, scissors, and some fishing line or string that you can hang it with. For our bird feeder, you're going to start by cutting holes that are large enough to fit a popsicle stick through the bottom of your bottle, but not too big that all your bird seed won't fall out. Once you've made your holes and put your popsicle stick, you're going to put a little tiny bit of hot glue to secure your popsicle stick. Then you will use hot glue to add little places to sit while the bird eats their lunch. Then using a push pin or even a regular pen, you're going to poke two small holes on top so that we can thread our fishing line to hang the bird feeder. You can tie that into a knot and then fill it with bird seed. When you fill it with bird seed, it helps to have a cone so you don't spill it all over the place. I spilled a little, but that's okay. Then once your bird feeders are ready, you can find a nice tree to hang them on and feed the birds. Now for your bird houses, you will primarily need scrap cardboard and I've already got mine cut up into 11 by eight and a half inch pieces. You will also need some hot glue, a ruler, a cutting utensil, a marker, and a dowel or two. Now the scrap cardboard will need to be divided into particular shapes and I'm gonna show you the measurements. For the sides, you will want it to be eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. For the roof, you will need two pieces of eight and a half by five and a half, just like the sides. And for the front and back each, you will want it to be eight inches by five inches with six inches at the bottom. And all of these shapes should fit on that original cardboard size. Then you can cut them up. After all your pieces are cut out, don't forget to draw a shape and cut it out so that your bird can get into their house. Then, once all your pieces are ready, you can go ahead and hot glue them to a base. Once your house is all glued together, the last thing is to poke some holes to add your dowels for the bird to sit and to hang your house from, and then you can decorate. And there we go. Welcome home, birds. I hope you had fun with today's activity, bird homes and feeders, and we'll see you next time. Need more quick craft ideas? We have you covered. Head to our social media pages for more videos. The Summer Youth Program ensures healthy meals are served to youth when school is out. The pandemic has changed how we live, but it hasn't changed how we care for our community. Let's hear more from Homer Garcia about the program. Uh, today, we're at Dawson Park uh, for the purpose of delivering meals to the community through our summer food program. The Parks and Rec Summer Food Program has 29 sites citywide, and it's designed in a way that people are able to, what we call, pick up the food in a grab-and-go fashion, very similar to a drive through they come get their meal touch free so everybody is practicing social distancing and keeping everyone safe in the process. Residents qualify by simply showing up and having children between the ages of 1 and 18. So if you arrive and you have three children with you, that's how many meals you're allowed to grab and go on your way to have a safe meal at home. This year 
Parks and Rec is delivering the program in a little bit different fashion. Uh, we have staff from all divisions, including the director's office and divisions outside recreation, which historically is the team that delivers this program annually to the public. We're doing it this way to help fill gaps in service delivery because we are in a pandemic. So we had to be creative in how we deliver these services to the community. So we know that while school is in session, children have access to healthy meals. But outside of school, when it's summertime, that's where Parks and Rec steps in so that we can make sure that we're connecting kids in the community to a healthy, nutritious meal so that when they return to school ready to learn in the fall, they can do so in a healthy way. Well, food security in the community, especially during a pandemic, is priority number one. So for knowing where you can get a meal, we encourage the public to call 211, which is United Way line that would have access to all meal opportunities in the community, or they can check our website for our program at saparksandrec.com. For more information, visit our website and follow us on social media. And that's our show. Thanks for watching. To stay updated on closures and anything Parks and Rec related, be sure to visit saparksandrec.com or on social media. We'll see you next time. Stay safe, San Antonio.